Hello! This week we are continuing on the sleep learning journey. And talking about those ever elusive daytime naps. Yes. So we are going to cover everything from nap routines, ideal schedules by age, and ultimately what worked for us. Yep. And just in case this is your first time meeting us, I'm Kurt. I'm a board certified pediatrician. I'm Sarah. I'm a board certified OBGYN mom to one little one-year-old and we are pregnant with number two after IVF. Yeah, and we are the, the Doctors Bjorkman. All right, if you are anything like us, naive first-time parents, <laughs> you may have imagined bringing your sweet baby home from the hospital, um, having a pack and play set up in your living room, and there you planned you would set your baby for naps <laughs> while you did work did some laundry, cleaned, maybe made dinner, watched some Netflix, whatever. Yeah, sounds wonderful. <laughs> yes. However, if your baby is anything like ours has been, the reality is not even close to that. No. Um, you can check out our video all about newborn sleep that is full of great tips for sleep for little babies. Um, but needless to say, we were very, very eager um, to find ways to help our daughter become a good napper during the day as she got a little bit older. Yep. And so also you may have watched our video all about sleep learning where we discussed yep. how sleep training is generally not recommended until about four to six months of mm -hmm. age. Um, and then we also went into lots of details about some of the medical evidence and studies that show there may be some benefits of sleep, sleep training mm -hmm. routines and more importantly, no clear harm from these as I know that's a worry for many of you. Um, we also shared at the end of that video some very straightforward tips about how to actually go about helping your child to do sleep learning. Yeah. So those of you who are, you know, thinking about sleep training or maybe have started doing it yourselves, you know, you're wondering about naps. How do you do naps? Is it kind of the same process? Is it different? What do you do? Yeah. And so as promised, we're going to dive into naps now. Now, just to be clear, this episode is all about nap times for those babies who are old enough, say four to six months of age at least, who are also ready to start working on sleep learning for nighttime sleep. Yes, those newborn sleep tips naps can be found in our newborn sleep video, which we can link, um, but this is for those little bit older kiddos. So, as we mentioned in our sleep episode, which is we will also link here, um, it's generally recommended that you start working on nighttime sleep first, okay? So, night sleep and day sleep use different parts of the brain. So, once your baby is starting to consolidate that night sleep, um, then it's kind of a great time to also start working on daytime sleep. So I think it was about after one or two nights of doing the sleep learning and yeah. things had gone fairly well from that standpoint, we said, hey, this is working well at night. Maybe it's time we can apply the same things to daytime sleep. Yes, because we, that sweet baby, she had been swaddled. That was really the only way she would sleep as a little bitty baby. She was like very much swaddled, loved it. Um, and so, you know, they hit this three to four months of age thing and you're supposed that to- That sleep regression that it, comes out of nowhere. The sleep regression that hits at four months, plus they're not supposed to be in a swaddle anymore as they can start to learn to roll over. So we were trying all these things like during her naps during the day of having one arm out of the swaddle. That didn't work. We tried like the magic Merlin suit. That's like, the starfish one, yeah. That No, no, that's, that's the- what is the starfish? There's one that they look like a little flying squirrel starfish. Yeah. Magic Merlin was that like marshmallow puff suit oh, that yeah. was like, that they looked work, like they yeah. were in a little snowsuit so they couldn't move yeah. very much. None of that <laughs> was working. Um, and we said, let's work on, let's get her night sleep good. Let's do the same thing during the day. And we were ultimately glad we did. Now, important things to keep in mind for nap learning are schedules, wake windows and routines. Yep. Babies thrive on schedule, repetition, and that routine being relatively the same day to day. Of course, you want them to learn to be flexible, um, but in the beginning with nap learning especially, it is a great idea to try to stick to the same routine as much as possible. Yes. And this all starts with having them wake up at around the same time, 
each day. Yep. Now, of course, it may vary a little bit from day to day, but for most babies, a wake up time between 6 and 8 a.m. works really well mm -hmm. um, and also allows them to get those needed 11 to 12 hours of sleep at night that you're working on with them in the sleep learning process. Right. Also, you can never forget about wake windows. Wake windows are how long babies can stay awake before needing their next nap. Um, this does vary a bit from baby to baby, but there are some general guidelines for expected wake windows by yeah. age. Yeah, and so for the average five to seven month old, these wake windows are gonna be about two to three hours. Mm -hmm. But for a seven to 10 month old, it's two and a half to three and a half hours. By the time they're getting close to a year, 11 to 14 months of age, those wake windows may be three to four hours. And then 14 months to two years of age, that's four to six hours. Um, and then with this knowledge, you then can kind of craft your day around these wake times and wake windows for your kiddo. Other things that you must consider when kind of figuring out your routine for the day um, is the average amount of daytime sleep that your baby needs, as well as the number of naps needed. Um, and so here we're going to break down for you those needed numbers based on age and what the averages are. Yeah. So back to those same age groups we just talked about for the five to seven month olds, they usually need about three naps mm -hmm. with a total of three to three and a half hours of daytime sleep. For those seven to 14 month olds, it's two naps. That usually totals about two and a half to three hours of daytime sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and then for those one to two year olds, um, that transition to one nap a day usually happens for a total of two to three hours of daytime sleep. Yes. So with all of this, you are shooting then for a bedtime between 6.30 and 8 p.m. Yep. Which is that set up again for 11 to 12 hours of nighttime sleep. A couple quick special notes. Mm -hmm. If your baby is taking multiple naps, so two or more naps a day, two hours is kind of the maximum amount of time you want them to sleep for at one time as those longer naps can end up disrupting the other naps during their day. So I know it's really hard, but for this process, it's generally a good idea to wake your baby if they've been sleeping for two hours during a daytime nap. So another note, um, if your baby is still taking that third nap in the afternoon, you want to make sure that you are waking them up at least two to two and a half hours before bedtime so that they can have a good wake window and are then ready and tired for sleep around between 6.30 and 8 o'clock. And so if you're wondering what does all this end up looking like in real life, there's right. actually some really good sample nap schedules mm -hmm. online. Yes. So Huckleberry is a sleep app um, or just a tracker app um, that you can get on your phone and they have free sample nap schedules. Taking Care of Babies um, is has wonderful free resources all about sleep. Um, that is what we use to guide us um, and we will Put it you know in the description below and how do you actually get a baby to nap in their crib during the day yeah so keys here are again just like night sleep mm -hmm. are routine and environment you want a shortened version of your bedtime routine mm -hmm. to then help signal your baby that it's time for sleep even though it's daytime. So you get them into their comfy clothes, put them in their sleep sack, read them a short story, sing them a lullaby, um, put on their white noise. These are all kind of those cues that you set up for nighttime sleep to help them understand that it's time for rest. Yes. Also, it is really important to prep the environment. Darkness really, mm -hmm. really helps um, signal baby it's time to sleep and stay asleep. Um, so it's a great idea to get some blackout curtains so you can get the room they're sleeping in really as dark as possible. And then you do that routine and it is the time. Um, you know, your goal is to lay your sweet baby down, awake in their crib and have them learn to fall asleep on their own. Yeah. And to do this is just what we talked about with our sleep learning video. Okay. You'll do check-ins with your baby every five, then 10, then 15 minutes until they fall asleep. So let's refresh any new viewers on exactly what that looks like 
practically in yeah. that way. So just like nighttime sleep learning, you lay your baby down in the crib, yep. um, you tell them that you love them, it's time for rest, and then you walk out of the room. Mm -hmm. And if your baby is crying, you start a timer. Um, after five minutes of crying, you go back into the room, you gently pat them on the back, let them know that you love them, that you're mm -hmm. there, that they can do this, um, and then you again leave. Yeah. This time, set your timer for 10 minutes. Um, if baby is still crying at the 10 minute mark, mm -hmm. you go back in. Again, you reassure them they are safe, they are loved, they are dry, they are fed, and then again you leave. Um, this time, setting the timer for 15 minutes. If still crying at 15 minutes, again, back into the room with the same routine of reassurance and then leave. Um, you continue then checking in on your little one every 15 minutes if they're still crying. So at what point though do you kind of abandon ship and just give up on that nap? Yeah, usually for most this is around 60 to 75 minutes or after that fifth to sixth check-in. Right. At that time um, you go in, maybe during a lull in the crying if you can, get baby up and do something active and awake. You then try to reattempt nap in about an hour yep. um, and repeating the above process. Exactly. What about times where they fall asleep but the nap's super short, they sleep for 20 minutes? Yeah, so we generally said that if a nap was only say 20 to 25 minutes, we would let her hang out in the crib for another 20 minutes to get to about a 40, 45 minute mark right. um, just to give her a chance to fall back asleep on her own. Yes. Um, if she didn't fall asleep by that 40 minute mark, we'd then go in, get her up, for a full wake window after that. Yes. If the nap was longer than 40 minutes, we said, well, that was the nap. Mm -hmm. We went in, got her up, and then did a full wake window. Yeah, um, and I think for many parents, if you've already done sleep yeah. training, sleep learning at night or mm -hmm. in the process, yeah. this nap training learning seems to go a lot better having yes. them already learn the routines at night. Yes. I think for us, I think for many people, definitely not everyone, but like naps can be really hard. Yeah. Um, like my sister had these wonderful three little boys that would just nap anywhere all the time. And that was not the case for our little one. Yeah. Um, and so something that was really helpful for us is just realizing that good sleep helps bring more good sleep. Yeah. And so like getting a good nap in the morning meant we would get a better nap in the afternoon. Um, there was no benefit if we kept her up later between naps, like if we pushed a wake window, pushed a wake window, it just like made it harder to get that next nap. And then like yeah. one bad nap, then like often just leads into a second bed. Crabby nap. And, yeah. um, and so for us, anyway, we got so much benefit out of having a pretty set schedule and routine as much as possible. Yeah. And I think that, there is this thought that like, hey, you know, I want my baby to be flexible and I want to continue to live my life and, mm -hmm. and that's wonderful. But also... If and you, important. And, but also, if like you have a routine and that allows your baby to nap and that gives you some sanity and some time for you so that you have this routine mm -hmm. and your baby's napping well... Also, don't feel bad for protecting that for yourself and your family. Yeah. And, you know, not everyone will understand that because maybe their kid would literally sleep anywhere or <laughs> maybe Lucky. your friends yeah. don't have kids. And, and so know that this is a season of life and that you it's absolutely OK yeah. if you did it channel change your life yeah. a little bit around your kids naps like and the nap schedule is going to change in a couple of months too, yeah also. Just, like, just when you get it figured out yeah. then it's time to transition to two naps yeah. or and then one and then even like you know we had like we right now where we're at like we want we have her doing something set in the morning every day and so like where she used to naturally fall asleep for her once daily nap at like 10 30 11. now like, she goes to preschool yeah, and, and had so to push it and and so her nap is from one to three and so like yeah you know these are things like you do have some flexibility and like moving your wake windows around a little bit and setting yeah. up that routine but, but just like having something set can be so helpful if you're struggling and literally just when you're like oh we We've got a good nap routine it's you're moving to that next age where they're oh it's something I think the other thing that just give yourself grace yeah. as you're doing this some kids again are flexible will nap wherever you take them 
my kid, our dear sweet kid, mm -hmm. needed to be in her crib in the dark with her white noise on mm -hmm. if we were going to take a, if we were going to nap. Like that sweet baby, I think, fell asleep on the floor playing one time in her whole entire life. Yeah. She just like, she's not going to sleep anywhere except she's in She's just crib. so excited about life right. otherwise. Right. So. so maybe that's her parents. Yeah. Maybe that's the way God made her. Probably I, I don't know, like, Probably that's us. just the way it was. And so I was like, well. But we said, yeah, this was it. So we'd bring her pack and play with us and a portable white noise. If we were going to be out and about, we'd say, hey, we're going to put blankets over the windows, yep. wherever we are to make a dark spot for yeah. her, have some white noise and like try to make it like her routine yeah. away from home too. And that yeah. worked okay for us. So there, times. there's ways you can, you know, try to accommodate this in other environments, but just do what works for you. Give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. Don't feel bad if you don't have the super flexible kid at this point. Good sleep is a happier kid and a happier parent, caregiver, whatever. So may your naps be long and wonderful. That's going to be it for this episode. Again, we are not sleep experts, but mm -hmm. we um, have been through the process. We did a lot of reading about this and just wanted to share what we did yep. with you in hopes that our process can be helpful for you as you're going through it as well. Yes. So may this lead to some good daytime naps for you and your little ones. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. We love to see them. It's so helpful for the other um, parents and caregivers mm -hmm. who watch these videos. Um, we love having you here and we'll see you next week. Bye guys. Bye. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.